Hello, good people of YouTube! Happy 4th of July! And for the 4th of July, I bring you guys my American Battleship Guide. I was working on the German Battleship Guide, and last week I was like, you know, be kind of cool if I could get an American Battleship Guide off just in time for the 4th of July. And hopefully this does come out on the 4th of July if I can get everything together. But anyway, so, American Battleships. American Battleships are one of the two oldest battleship lines in the game, the other being the Imperial Japanese Battleships. They have been in the game since the very beginning, all the way through to the game that we have today, and boy has it been a ride for them. American Battleships have undergone several changes themselves since their introduction, lowering of their citadels, changing of their AA, and improvement of their heels, to name a couple of changes. Today I'm going to walk you guys through the line and explain how to America in 2020. So, the concept of the American battleships. The overall concept, or at least the perception of that concept of the American battleships, has changed a lot since the beginning of the game. Since back in 2015, all the players had to compare the American battleships to were the Imperial Japanese battleships, which, again, that's way back in the day. Today, U uh, U.S. battleships are seen as a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none line. Well, as close as a year ago, they were seen as support battleships with their absolute no-fly zone AA, decent tankiness, accurate guns, and speed from at least tier 8 and up. American battleships today can be described as average in all categories except 2, the AA, and their guns. Many traits that were w once seen to be unique to the U.S. battleship line have been eclipsed today by other lines. For example, U.S. AA used to be the absolute best in the game, but that is now shared by a couple other lines, especially the Royal Navy battleships. But despite these changes and the amount of power creep, the Americans are still relevant today. So let's go ahead and get looking into the line. So, the American battleship line can be split into two categories. You have the Super Dreadnoughts and then the Fast Battleships. The Super Dreadnoughts are from Tier 3 to Tier 7 and the fast battleships are from tier 8 to tier 10. So let's go ahead and get diving on into the super dreadnoughts. So, so tier 3 through tier 7. Welcome to some of the highest highs and the lowest lows of the U.S. battleship line, the dreadnought stage. Tier 3 through 7 of the U.S. battleship line are made up of dreadnoughts and super dreadnoughts, meaning that these ships are slow, tanky as hell, and extra thick. These battleships all share an extremely similar playstyle, mid-range tanks staying back about 10 to 13 kilometers, again depending upon tier because the range really does, you know, at tier 3 the range starts out I think like the maximum range of most battleships down there is like 11 kilometers, but by the time you get to tier 7, you know, you have ships like the Colorado with way more range, so roughly 10 to 13 to 15 kilometers, again depending upon their tier, and running AP down upon cruisers and battleships. Americans at these tier tiers have decently large guns for their tier, nothing too large, but nothing too small, except for the Colorado, who gets 16-inch guns at tier 7, but more on her later. These battleships here also enjoy good rudder shift times, small turning circle radiuses, and decent torpedo protection. The armor on these ships is reliable and tough, and this is a every bit of the ship is armored, and these ships are just incredibly tough. Now the bad part is that these ships are agonizingly slow, which isn't a huge deal until you get to the Colorado, but they do bleed much less speed when they turn compared to other battleships. Now back to the guns. The lower tiers here are a bit shotgunny, but I mean like what tier 4 and below isn't? I mean, for example, the Germans, I mean the Germans have bad dispersion, but good god, even at these tiers, like, it's all over the place. Even, even the Soviets who have the, the gimmick of the closer you are to the target, the better the dispersion. Even at these, you know, tier 5 and 4, 
they're still pretty bad shotguns. So that's nothing in, inherently bad about the American Battleship line, but just be expected that when you're playing, you know, through Tier 3 up to Tier 5. From Tier 6, the New Mexico, and Tier 7, the Colorado, you get much better accuracy and dispersion, which is extremely helpful in the Colorado, and the Colorado is the lowest low of the American Battleship line. She's stuck with the 20 knot top speed and can get up tier to tier 9 games with battleships that are quite literally twice as fast as her. Her saving grace is a 406mm guns and spotter plane. Utilizing this, she can barely keep in the fight, but at the end of the day, there's not, there's not much you can do with a 20 knot top speed when you get up tier to tier 9. And again, most of these ships at this tier, tier 3 to 7, they have a very similar playstyle. You want to be hanging, again, mid range, so. Let's just use the New Mexico for an example. Hanging back about 12 to 14 kilometers, using all 12 of your 14 inch guns, and just raining down AP upon anything that's silly enough to give you their broadside and just delivering one heck of a punch. Now, of course, you want to be angled as much as you can, which means your bow or stern is facing toward the enemy, to, to where when they shoot back at you, you don't have you're not giving them a, a flat broadside. And the American battleships, a lot of them have plenty of guns at this tier. So it is very tempting to want to get, you know, your full broadside off. But you got to resist that temptation. Because if you do get your full broadside off, and a lot of times that involves showing the enemy your flat broadside, even as tanky as these ships are, you're still going to get absolutely slapped in return. So you want to avoid that. You also want to stick with your teammates, be there for them, so when you need them, that they can be there for you. That's the hugest piece of advice I can give you guys. We're definitely playing at lower tier. tier. Also, don't sell in a straight line. Vary up your speed, take a turn every now and then, just keep it mixed up to where the torpedo boats that will be hunting you at this tier, because again, you're in a big, slow American battleship, they can easily just get a whole salvo of torpedoes off on you and wreck your day. And especially since these ships have a much better um, speed bleed on their turning, there's really no excuse to not be turning every now and then, especially since, you know, compared to other battleships, you really won't be hurting that much in the speed department when you turn. These ships are slow, but they are very maneuverable. But once you get through these ships and past the Colorado, and once you put up with that Colorado grind, the reward is oh so sweet. And that's when we get to the Tier 8 to Tier 10 American battleships. And welcome to the tier where the U.S. Navy decided that speed was now very, very important. These are the fast battleships. Tier 8 to 10 of the U.S. Battleship line are the shining jewels of the line. They are, they are all equipped with 406mm guns, which while not overly large for their tiers, they're not especially small either. From Tier 9 and up, the fast battleships have access to a special, unique module, Artillery Plotting Room Mod 2. Artillery Plotting Room Mod 2 decreased, decreases the dispersion of the main battery guns by another 11% making the already good dispersion of the U.S. battleships even better. The slow velocity of the U.S. battleship guns at these tiers become more evident compared to other nations, though. Slow velocity makes it a bit more difficult to aim at longer ranges, especially since you got to compensate for it so much more. However, there is a bonus to this slow velocity, coupled with 16-inch guns. These battleships are very excellent cruiser killers, these fast battleships. They get less overpinned on broadsides of cruisers because of this, since the guns are only 16 inches in diameter. They're, they're not small, by any stretch of the imagination, but they're not these massive, you know, 18-inch guns, 20-inch guns that are coming out now that get a lot of overpins. And I mentioned this back in the Our Battleships Dying video when people were saying, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm getting more and more overpins on, um, on cruisers. And that's because a lot of these battleships that War Gaming's introducing at Tier 10 now, you know, they got 457 millimeter guns, 400 and you know, 20 millimeter guns, just huge guns, and they are also coupled with insane velocity, like the Soviet battleships. So yes, of course you're going to be getting more overpins on cruisers when you're firing an 18-inch shell at them, going 800, 900 meters a second, but on the the American battleships with 16-inch guns, 406mm for you uh, non-Americans, they are much smaller shells, traveling much slower, so they won't pass through 
the cruisers near as much as the uh, other ships will. Now, am I saying that they're not going to overpin cruisers? Of course not. They are. But they will do it much, much, much less than the other battleships. And that's kind of the theme of the American guns, especially from Tier 8 and Tier 10. They are likely set Tier 3 through Tier 7, too. They have slow velocity, but again, down at those tiers, it's kind of every battleship, it's, you know, give or take one or two here and there. They are good and they are consistent. You will get consistently get way more pins using an American battleship than any other battleship in the game. I can tell you that right now. And since you do have four to six millimeter guns and a lot of these tier 10 cruisers, which you will be facing plenty of playing tier eight and above, are you know more well armored than obviously lower tier cruisers you're going to be pinning them plenty enough to where it's it's pretty satisfying even the small lengths now don't get me wrong you're going to over pin that 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 ship but when that bastard slips up and your shells connect it's you will you you will trust me you will pin and citadel him more often in an american battleship than in in the other battleship so now, the velocity is really slow on the North Carolina. You get a bit of a pickup in that velocity going from the, 45, from the 45 caliber guns of the North Carolina to the 50 caliber guns of the Iowa and the Montana. Now, caliber in reference to naval guns means the length of the barrel. The barrel on the North Carolina is only 45 caliber, while the barrel on the Iowa and Montana are 50 caliber. That means they're a bit longer, so you get more velocity out of them. Uh, in the NorCal, you, you get like 702 meters a second on the AP. In the Iowa and the Montana, you get 762 meters a second on the AP. So, aiming's a bit better with the uh, Iowa and Montana. You don't have to lead as much, but I mean, still compared to other battleships, it's... You know, you gotta lead a bit more, and you can. If you ever catch me on stream, and um, I go from playing like the Massachusetts or the Iowa and the Montana back to playing the Kerr first or whatever, you can tell that like I'm leading targets way too much because I'm just got done playing an American battleship. And I gotta get used to going back to something that doesn't have such slow shells either. Now. Um, the overall play style of the fast battleships, again, just like the tier 3 to tier 7, they are extremely similar. Uh, I'm talking about, you can play them, and you do play all three of them pretty much exactly the same, again, just like the Super Dreadnoughts. So, what you want to do with the fast battleships is, again, staying at mid-range, 14 kilometers to, se to 17 kilometers away from the enemy, either sharply angled or bow in, just like with the Super Dreadnoughts. And you do kind of, and again with the Super Dreadnoughts, you can kind of get away with showing more broadside because of their armor. We're about to get into the armor of the um, of the uh, fast battleships here in a second. But you do want to forget that your rear turrets exist, especially in the Iowa and the North Carolina. And you do want to kind of sit bow in or sharply angled at, again, mid-range, and just use your main your uh, front two guns. You have pretty good bow armor, good deck armor, and your turrets are also armored pretty well as well. Now, if there is a light cruiser, and we all know which one we're probably all thinking of on the enemy team, also you don't want to be sitting bow in. What you do want to do is keep moving, use your speed, and use your good concealment. That's another thing. The uh, fast battleships have pretty dang good concealment for their, for their tier, especially the North Carolina and the Iowa. We use that good concealment to break line of sight, turn, and keep running laps at mid-range. And you want to, again, be there for your team so they can be there for you when you need them. And be aware of your surroundings. You want to change course and position at random intervals to avoid torps. Since the fast battleships, unlike the Super Dreadnoughts, they have mediocre torpedo protection for their tier. While the, um, the Super Dreadnoughts do have pretty decent torpedo protection overall for their tier the fast battleships not so much now the fast battleships are also completely capable of pushing and trust me the last thing the enemy team wants to see is a pissed off montana coming at them but they are not german battleships they are not soviet battleships they need plenty of support to push with a soviet battleship or a german battleship it can be you and maybe just your buddy that wants to go ahead and push and you guys can certainly do that and get away with it but the fast battleships they use an all-or-nothing armor scheme which means that all of their vital areas 
are armored, but the rest of the ship has no extra armor. There's no special armor plates on the bow or the stern, like the Soviet or the Germans, how, you know, the Soviets get that icebreaker bow that wraps around the front of their, uh, of their, of their bow. And the German battleships, they also have an additional front plating and stern plating. The American battleships do not get this. Their citadels are pretty well hidden, but again, that doesn't mean you can show broadside, except for the North Carolina. North Carolina, for some reason, she is still super easy the citadel. But the Iowa and the Montana, their citadels are below the waterline, but that does not mean you can show broadside. They are still fairly squishy. This is the price to pay for speed. In addition to the armor, the price is also paid in maneuverability. Unlike the Super Dreadnoughts, the fast battleships have very large turning radiuses. Since these ships are designed later in the war, they also have much better AA than the Super Dreadnoughts. While the Super Dreadnoughts do have pretty decent AA, especially starting from like tier 6 and up, these, sh these ships here have some of the best AA for their tiers. Again, the, you know, the North Carolina, the Iowa, the Montana, they don't stand out as much as they used to be. Like, again, before the, the uh, British battleships were introduced, they had, you know, no contest, the best AA on battleships in the game. But since the Royal Navy battleships have been, have been introduced, they kind of rival the Americans in, in that regard. And some of the Soviet battleships, too, uh, do as well. But overall, their AA is still very good, but you do have to be built for it, which brings us to the builds for these ships. Alright, so for the builds, there are two main builds that work well with USBBs. The first one is an AA build. Now, the thing with AA is that with the CV rework, AA is still fairly unpredictable and unreliable. Uh, it's, it's a weird situation because at the end of the day, it's AA being controlled by AI, shooting at planes that are controlled by a player, so it's it's hit or miss, but the Monty still has good enough AA to where, in my opinion at least, it warrants an AA build. Now, you could use this on the Iowa and the North Carolina too, because again, both those ships still do have better than average AA, and CV players do seem to at least avoid you early on in the game until either they're forced to attack you or if you're out by yourself, which again, like I said earlier, you need to stick with your team with USBBs. With any ship, you need to be sticking with your team. So, AA built, in my, in my opinion, they're still warranted on American BBs. So, I would use the build that I'm, that's up on screen right now. Uh, Preventive maintenance because, again, having less chance of your, of your modules being knocked out is a nice thing. MLG turrets, um, I use this on most of my battleships because if you do need to get into a brawl or something, it's very nice to have quick turrets, and again, having quick turret rotation is fun <laughs> and very useful in my opinion. Um, then I would go with, at this point, this is where you decide what build you, you want to go with. You could go with a survivability build or an AA build. And here is either you choose BFT or Basics of Survivability. And then for your first four-point skill, again, that's up to you. Do you want to go with an AA build? If you do, then you would go with AFT. But if you're going for a Survivability build, then you would go ahead and go with Fire Prevention. Coming back around, your next two-point skill, I would choose Adrenaline Rush. Again, uh, I think every Battleship player or almost every player in the game uses Adrenaline Rush. A must have, then superintendent, and then concealment. Because, like I said earlier, the fast battleships have very, very, very good concealment values for their tier. Now, for the module build, this is a module build that honestly I, I believe could be used across all American battleships. Now, um, again, my Montana is spec for AA. The only difference here in this build and for the dreadnought build is that instead of picking the Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1 and AA Guns Mod 1, I would go with instead Main Armaments Mod 1 on the Super Dreadnoughts, and for the third module slot, I would go with something like Artillery Plotting Room Mod 1. Before the Fast Battleships, I would stick with, you know, again, if you went with an AA build, build your modules for your AA as well. It helps, except for slot number 6, where I would pick um, Artillery Plotting Room Mod 2. That's a special module that the American battleships get that makes your dispersion even better and gives you 
nice, consistent dispersion on the Iowa and the Montana. You can also equip this on the Missouri and the Georgia and the Ohio if you so wish. So again, just in going through the module slots for the fast battleships, I would pick Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1, Damage Con Mod 1, AA Guns Mod 1, Damage Con Mod 2, Concealment, and then Artillery Platter Room Mod 3. On the Super Dreadnoughts, and I'm just doing this at the Colorado because it's the highest tier one with the most slots, I would pick Main Armaments Mod 1, Damage Con 1, Artillery Platter Room Mod 1, and then Damage Con Mod 3. Two. Now there is an argument for a secondary build, especially on the fast battleships, but in my personal opinion I do not think it is worth it. I think you're better off choosing a tank build or a AA build on the American battleships because again overall those two builds are what I think is the best for these ships. Now certainly the Montana does have pretty good secondary, so do, does the Iowa and the North Carolina. But if you want a secondary build American Battleship, I would recommend you would look into getting the Massachusetts, the Georgia, or the Ohio. They all have fantastic secondary builds and are a load of fun. But again, some people swear up and down by it. And I'm just letting you guys know that that is an option that some people follow. But again, it is my personal experience and my opinion that it's not worth it on the higher tier fast battleships. On the Dreadnoughts, Sure, you could do it, but again, still, I wouldn't really recommend it. I'd recommend either a tank or a survivability build. So, guys, that is my guide to American battleships. I hope this helped you out. Hope this helped some of you new guys out, or maybe you're going up the American battleship line the first time. This is my personal experience from it. This was the first line that I grinded all the way through from tier 3 to tier 10. And some people say they've been power crap some people say that they're out of the meta I don't think so uh, the Montana definitely is there's no lack of Montana at tier 10 I can tell you guys that much uh, she still hangs in there despite her old age I do think you know war game we should maybe look at you know sprucing them up giving them a little bit here and there they did give them the improved heal like I mentioned earlier and that is very nice but overall they're still a very good line a very solid line and they definitely do fill the role of jack of all trades masters of none all right guys hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop a like leave a comment and subscribe we're on our way to 15,000 subscribers we recently passed 13,000 and i cannot thank you guys enough for that that is amazing we are now under 2,000 away from our 15,000 goal and again i cannot thank you guys enough for that hope you're all having a good fourth of the july and i hope to catch you guys in the next one No, it looks that way because I'm that much longer than fucking New Mech than uh, North Carolina. No, but I'm looking at your I'm looking at your guys' back, not front. Are we laying up front? <laughs> or back? Are we laying back? Or go, go a little bit forward. Such a simple task, and yet so it's so hard in execution. Value perfect. Like Watching a couple it, of monkeys try to screw in a light bulb right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the perception that your camera is at floating in air fucks with your perception. Free cam it. Dan, where are you going? Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh fuck, my fuck. god! <laughs> <laughs> Red. Red. <laughs> we were what? this close to greatness. <laughs> we were this close. Of course, it was Colorado. Well, he, he is in New Mexico. He needs a head start. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, New Mexico just wanted to go room. <laughs> <laughs> I got oh a shot God. from the front, and then I go to get the shot from top down, look down, and I just see Dan's New Mexico just like, <laughs> Hello! <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least it's a lot easier to go fast. My people need me. So turn to the right, and let me get the camera in the position. Uh, Dan's already turned. Dan, Dan. you done for You sit to the right. I'm going to my right. Well, I was going to count down. I don't know how real ships do it. Like, how the fuck do they get it so perfectly lined up? Fucking years of training. Years of training, yeah, true. Like, the, you don't understand how impressive it was that the entire column of the Grand Fleet, Grand Fleet. Jetland did the line of rest that it did. 
it n not a single ship, no destroyer, no cruiser, not a single one of them collided. Rammed another ship. Yeah, that like that is perfection. Like if a, a fleet can do that, its coordination and is on par with no one else. Jeez, how'd you get over there, Sea Lord? Apparently, Colorado just has like a dank rudder. Uh, what what are we mashing at? Twenty knots. Uh, so my full tilt in. Yeah, full tilt, full rudder. I should complete the turn first. My Carolina and the Montana. This is gonna be last. Wait, go Jeebus. Oh, wait. I'm going. I are perfect. Meanwhile, the Montana. 